All right, so a lot of men think they want good looks, that they want a woman who could cook, but those are all superficial things. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you eight, no, five things that men really want in a woman, the good ones, but they just don't know they want it, so that you can give them what they want. That's why guys cannot tell you what they want in a person, in a woman, because they haven't really done self-inquiry. So I'm going to reveal to you those things so that you can work on it. And also, I'm going to show you what to do to provide that for him. Now, this is not going to be superficially, which is to say, you got to do this in order to give him this. No, no, no. I'm going to show you how to develop it from the inside so that you don't have to think about it. So that it's something that's more unconscious rather than consciously consciously trying to give your man what you want. It takes too much effort, all right? So let's just start. One, and this is kind of surprising, masculinity. See, it's okay to have, a lot of women think that having masculinity, masculinity will make guys lose attraction. When I talk about masculine, it's more about the aggressive nature that men have, that women try to suppress inside of them. Testosterone is what drives men to be more ambitious, competitive, and overly more aggressive, you see? So most women, out of insecurity, they elect to suppress their masculine side. They suppress it because they believe that being overly feminine will keep the guy. The problem with that, it kind. Of, the problem with that, it, it 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 makes it it makes you an unbalanced individual because as human beings, we have to learn how to embrace the feminine and the masculine. And the only reason why most people don't embrace the um the polar um those polarities is because out of insecurity. Guys who are insecure will try to act more masculine for the sake of acting masculine. Women who are insecure will try to act more feminine for the sake of being more feminine and to gain their validation. Now, I'm not telling you to create this out of, out of, out of thin air, but rather you got to learn how to bring it out in yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do it. The problem, though, is that when, in order to bring it out, you have to begin to, you have to look through the judgment and the shame that comes with it. A lot of women are judged by, by pursuing masculine masculine ambition for example when you were a little girl you were told do this do that because you were a girl you can't play that you can't play with that stand like this stand like that sit like this sit like that and as a result superficial things will lead to um will lead to um will produce internal results which is to say you become jaded you become hindered you say to yourself because i'm a woman i can't do that so you're not so you don't really learn to be yourself in, in as um um, you don't learn to be a sub because you're trying to conspicuate to other people's demands. It's it, it, who you are. It's underneath the shame and guilt, which which um where uh, where your feminine nature lies. Don't run away from that pain, the shame, the desire to do this, the desire to do that. Run towards it and explore it. Feel the sensation of pain associated with the action you're trying to do. Feel the sensation of pain associated with any sort of shame that you feel, and just observe it. Become more self-aware of your inner and emotional state. You see, because it, because your masculine side, the natural interest, the natural desire to say this or that is going to naturally arise. But in order for a guy, but the point is, is that a guy just wants you to have a hint of masculinity. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing, a bit of uncertainty. Guys want to know that their girl is loved, um, that their girl loves and cares about them. And that, that's natural, right? That's, that, that's like common sense. But... Whenever he knows that you care and, and, and love him without, whenever he knows that he has you and that he's never going to lose you, you know what happens? You get lazy. Guys get lazy. When do, guys work to, when do guys work to get a girl? When he feels like he's losing her. That's what tends to happen. For example, it's kind of like when you, if you're raised as a child and you're given everything, what happens? You lose ambition. If you continually validate him without him having to work for you, without him having to work to gain those validation, then he's going he's gonna to grow used to it. What you have to do is from time to time give him hints that there is a possibility that if you fuck up, you could lose me. A lot of women don't give him that. A lot of, give, a lot of women don't give him that dose of reality because of fear of losing the guy. It, but that's reality. He could lose you. But you don't want to let him know that because you don't want to lose him. You see, and that's where you're fucking yourself up. You got to give him some uncertainty. You see, pr I promise you that a guy who feels like he's losing his woman will work more together than a guy feeling that he has her. We all need a challenge. That's how it is. We all need a challenge. And if you don't provide him that challenge, guess what? He's going to lose interest. And I don't give a fuck if you tell me this is playing games. It's just how life is. Life is a game. Don't take it so seriously. Number three, high levels of self-awareness. Guys don't think about this because they don't go as deep as I do, right? I think about the spiritual aspect. Low levels of self-awareness always yields to low self-esteem. The low self, the low levels of self-awareness comes from because of you not wanting to see what's inside of you. 
So as a result, because what's inside of you produces so much pain, you will naturally, you will naturally expand your awareness. You will naturally turn your awareness from the inside to the outside. Rather than observing the pain, you try to find an alleviation, quick fixes to fix the pain inside of you. The distractions, the distractions, the distractions strengthens the false self you're trying to project and peripherally. It strengthens the false self you're trying to project and peripherally. You see what I'm saying? So rather than fixing the issue, the cure becomes worse than the disease. Your desire to not be aware of your pain causes you to feel more pain at an unconscious level. It's almost like a rogue program that's 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 um, running uh, that's running behind the background of a computer, taking up all of the RAM. That's what tends to happen the more you divert your attention from the inside to the outside as a result of pain. The outside projection comes in the form of looking for validation, trying to feel better, trying to find someone to fix what's inside of you. So as a result, you project onto the world defensiveness and, const and, and constant conflict within and without. You're always fighting with yourself, the shame, the guilt, the anger, the pain. And as a result, you try to project it outward in, as, 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 a, as a way to relieve yourself. The projection of, the, the projection of you trying to relieve your, uh, yourself from the pain causes you to attract more situations that make that pain even stronger. Know the pain and see it and stay there. Don't do nothing about it. Smile at your pain. Go towards the pain. This will increase your levels of self-awareness and thus drastically improve your relationship with yourself and your relationship with others. Number four, when a guy will look, good men will look for a woman who has a life. Bad men will look for a woman who doesn't have a life because it's a lot more easy to manipulate. An isolated target is, is much more vulnerable than a target surrounded by social support. A woman without a life is a woman who's not living with purpose. You have to have things you do outside of your man, mm -hmm, right? It's crucial because it's crucial for a woman to have a social circle or activity that she does that, that, that doesn't include your man. Why is that? Because a man wants a woman who could be fine without him. He might want her all to himself, right? But he'll soon realize that how he feels to have a woman who doesn't have any sources of self-esteem without him isn't as good as he thinks. But if he does like having a woman who depends on him, then you have to run away from him because he's using you as, as self-esteem. You see, don't make that mistake. Begin to surround yourself. Begin to surround yourself with a good social circle. Stop, start, have, start going to activities where you meet people. Got salsa class. Start going to yoga class. Start going to cooking classes. Start going to different kind of activities that doesn't include your guy because if you don't do that, then you're gonna grow depending on him. Start getting closer to your family. If you struggle getting closer to your family, get closer to yourself. Go within yourself and observe any pain you are experiencing. I tell you, man, self-awareness is fucking huge, man. It really is. And a lot of women, they think that if they find a guy, they'll find happiness. They'll find, but the problem though is that when you find a guy, he'll become your life. He'll become your life, and guess what? It's a lot easier to manipulate someone who doesn't have any other sources of happiness. It's very easy. And I'm telling you, the outcome is always anticlimactic because you're gonna you're gonna make the guy pull away from you if you have no life but him. No bueno, muchacha. No bueno. The last one, when a woman, a woman who values her health, it's simple. If you're dead, he can't love you. <laughs> like seriously, like, you know, like if you're dead, you guys can't be together. But the point is a lot of women, they, they don't really take care of their health that much. They eat a lot of sugar. Their insulin level is always high. They have low energy. You see, you can't think straight. You're always, you're, you're, you're consistently not taking care of your body. You're not stretching. You're not keeping your ligaments nice and nice and nimble. You're not eating the right things. You're eating processed foods. You're consistently not, not, not working out, letting go of yourself. Now, I'm not talking about looking pretty. I'm talking about being internally and externally happy. I mean, healthy. You must learn to go to not just take care of your mind, which is what I taught you, but also take care of your body. You see, it's not just about being in shape. It's about giving your body what it needs, the proper nutrients that's balanced that, and that promotes health and vitality. Too many women let their health go after a while. You see, and I like to believe that the healthier a woman is, the more attractive she is. It's just that simple. You see, and, 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 and it provides less complications in their relationship. A man wants a woman who's healthy and who takes care of herself. He likes that because not only is she healthy, but it also inspires a guy. It inspires him to actually, to actually improve with his life as well. 
See, I'm not saying that men are that all. I'm not saying that men are superficial. And they prefer a sexy, healthy woman. No, but that it's the natural reaction to find unhealthy things unattractive. An animal would rather eat a healthy animal than than a sick animal. It's that simple. Animals taste different. If they eat healthy animals, that's supposed to be they eat unhealthy animals. Well, men really. So, in other words, make not just your mental health your primary mode of attention, but also your physical health. And take that shit seriously. Guys admire that. Guys find that attractive. Guys really do. And when a guy notices that you don't care about your health, you, you're going to lose the good guys. You're going to lose them. All right? Anyways, this is Alex from My for Attraction. I hope I was able to help. Take care and have a good day. And bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy to influence people, learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive, and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life, your spiritual life, honestly, um, your relationship life, your family life, your career life, this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces, one is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15, 16, holy shit. Oh my God, he's a bad fucking uncle, he's a, he's a bad uncle, get him. Shut up, Melissa, you should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So, for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's it's your bodyguard. Without this, your whatever feminine energy you create will be destroyed by the outside because your, your, fem, your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're going to be talking about how to, um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal-oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man. <laughs> you know, it, you know? Now, the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy, right? This one, would, this one will teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self-awareness, healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo uh, mastering voice qualities and, ex and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly, it's, it's, it, it, this will supercharge, like, like Kyle Ken, your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women of power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace. And even the dress code, they, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. And how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you can read people better. Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um, nine at ninety nine dollars, um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video right there. You'll see it, and you can pre order that course. It's gonna be out by by the end of next month or the beginning of February of, of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10-day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think the, the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel.